Okay, I'm using a pair of TC4420s with a pickaxe microcontroller, or it can be an Arduino, to simply act as a um, low power H bridge. They claim to be able to handle up to 6 amps peak. Um, a 1 amp motor should be easy to handle with it. You just use two of the TC 4420s and four diodes and that's all you need. Really simple setup. Real briefly from the previous video, this is the TC 4420, 4429, two different parts. It takes care of all your input level shifting, TTL, CMOS inputs. And this particular 8-pin dip has a 6-amp peak output the Mo from this pair of MOSFETs. All right, let's move on down. All right, here is the circuit that you saw in the video. I just used a pair of TC4420s to run a small 400 milliamp motor. They acted directly, they could be configured directly as an H-bridge. You need these bypass capacitors. The only difference is there are no internal protection diodes. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I use some 1N5819s externally as you see here. In the next video, I will go more into H-bridge circuits. Here, I'm just demonstrating alternate ways of hooking up different devices. Here, of course, again, here's your different packages. I use the 8-pin dip, which is fairly low power. If you wanted to use these directly, you have this much higher power 12.5 watt dissipation device, the TC4420 and 4429 CAT. I explained that in the previous video. Here is your more typical connection. You have this pair of MOSFETs connected as shown gate to gate, drain to drain, in-channel source to ground, P-channel source to VCC, this is all you need to connect this. The VCC can go from 18 to 20 volts. In this example, I have a high input. It gives me a high output, turns off U3, the P channel, and it turns on U2, the, U, the N channel, and thus you have a current path back from the load through U2. Now, these diodes that you see here are most of the time internal to the MOSFETs. I drew them in because some people wanted to see the diodes. Same circuit again, but we put a low in. A low out turns off U2. It turns on U3, creating a source current from uh, VCC back to the load. In my previous video, I showed how to cut on a couple of MOSFETs using a uh, TC4420. This would be what I call a low side switch. It switches the motor to ground, and of course the motor runs back to VCC. Or we could look at it the other way. In this configuration, I'm using uh, P-channel MOSFETs. When, uh, with a TC4429, a high end gives me a low out, turns on these MOSFETs. You can use a TC4420, just keep in mind a high will turn off the transistor. So this would be a high side switch, and this could be a low side switch. All right, All right. back at the beginning of the video, I showed you that I could control the speed of my little H bridge. I happen to use a couple of 4420s. You can use a 4420 and a 4429. Tie the two inputs together and a high and a low will change motor direction except you can't turn off the motor. And it's a little tricky to do motor speed like that. If you move on down 
what I did to control the speed is I use a TC4420 and an end channel. I put it in the ground side of the uh, little H-bridge configuration, tied this side to VCC, and I pulse width modulated it down here. As an alternate setup, you can ground this side. Then you can connect this with either a 4420 or uh, 4429. Just remember your input level and you could use a P channel and use it as a high side switch. So that way you can control, you would have one input to enable and disable and then you would have a uh, single input if you want to tie these together down here is direction one or the other of these is enable use one or the other you'll probably use the one with the in channel because in channels are more common and easy to find another alternative way to use this device is to drive a pn this is an NPN bipolar transistor, a 2N3055, for example. A high input gives me a high output. What it does, basically, it switches VCC to the output. You have to calculate your um, IB with the appropriate base resistor. And this forms a low side switch for the load up here as shown. Alternatively, I can use the TC4420 to drive a PNP power transistor to act as a high side switch. Again, you have to calculate your IB with the appropriate base resistor. And you might this might be useful for something. Again, the advantage is the output can on the TC4420 or 29 can sink considerably more current than what an Arduino, Pickaxe, or Raspberry Pi can. The input takes care of all your interfacing, doesn't matter if it's 3 volt or 5 volt logic, CMOS, TTL, doesn't matter. And I tried this out, it seemed to work very well. In my next video, we will be going over using the TC4420 29s to build a simple, easy to construct, high performance H bridge circuit. Thanks for listening. Visit my website at www.bristolwatch.com. Have a great day.